Welcome back to the Pastor Pod. We're so glad you're with us uh, for our next episode. So glad that you're here. If if you don't know, our, we're here with our good friend uh, Jay, as as usual. But today we have a special guest with us. Really good friend of mine, going way back to the college days. Pastor Rick Herman is here with us, and so we're looking forward to learning from you today, buddy, and uh, also just catching up. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Give everybody a a good snapshot of you and your family and, and your ministry. Well, I'm absolutely honored to be on this a studious podcast with you two fine gentlemen. Uh, like I said, I'm, <laughs> that's not what we hear every week. That's so funny. That's, that, that's funny. That's good. Okay. Uh, I've been enjoying listening to the podcast. You guys are awesome. Um, but like I said, my name's Rick. Uh, let's see here. I am married to Cheryl, amazing wife. We've been married for 16 years now. Uh, been in ministry about 21 years now. Man, wow, guys, we're not you guys, but I'm getting old. Jay, you're getting old too. Josh is still young. But um, yeah, speak for so yourself, uh, buddy. Done, speak for yourself. I'm not old. Yeah, done all kinds of different ministry, uh, youth ministry. Uh, I was a middle school pastor, college pastor, young families pastor. And I went and uh, was the senior pastor of church for four years. And for the last almost seven years, I've been kind of doing my second tour of duty at Christ Place Church, um, changed roles a few times right now. My official role is uh, the Go Pastor, so uh, I have responsibility over um, all of our missions and all of our campuses. We are we just launched our first campus, and so um, we're kind of getting into the campus launch world, and so yeah, I just kind of have a lot of different responsibilities with that, and also um, a residency program, so I have five awesome kids keep trying to keep up with jay so our kids are i think similar in age they go from uh, my oldest is a boy that's 14 and then i have gr four girls and they go from ages let's see 11 down to four so so just awesome. enjoying the dad life man super busy but loving life and loving ministry boom four to 11 and then a 14 year old i have four to 11 and a 13 year old so you started a year earlier than i did that's because yeah. you're older than me. Yeah, I turned 40 this year, so it's been a real uh, real game changer. Yeah, game changer. Yeah. Game changer. Did you know so you're geriatric after you're like 38 like it, for pregnant people? I just found that out this week. Wow. You're geriatric after I know that doesn't apply you to us. You say for, for, for what people? For, for, for women. Because, <laughs> you know, we can't have kids. So anyway. <laughs> okay. I thought that's what you said, but I was like, what in the world? Yeah. Jerry, yes, I did know that. Yeah. Well, I'm right behind you guys. I'm not there yet, Rick, but I'm here in Venice and, you know, there's a lot of retirees here, but a lot of young people too. And so there's a 40 and up men's basketball league oh, that I have been invited to and they've slowly let me come and play. So I'm, I'm still under 40, but they let me in. So I feel well, very honored. I found it uh, a little frustrating when people thought I was over 40 when I, I wasn't over 40. And so now um, I'm okay. I'm in the club, man. I'm in the forties. So how does it feel? Does it, I mean, do you feel wiser? Smarter? Uh, no, it kind of makes you feel like you don't, you bet you better, better do something significant with the time you have left. And uh, you know, I think it feels like the older you get, the more life speeds up. So mm -hmm. I, I guess that's just because, you know, your view of time is a little different. You know, when you're only five years old, a fifth of your life is, seems like a long time um now you know a year just goes by in no time so yeah so it's good though i think you know when you're enjoying life it goes by fast That's i right. take my i take my cues from my kids about how old i feel like it's 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 all age is just yeah no like, well I, let me tell you this jay last night um my son came to me this is real encouraging he's my 14 year old and i've been trying to lose some weight want to get down to um you know a healthy weight because now i'm 40 <laughs> right so he says, uh, dad he's like you don't look obese anymore. You just look like a regular overweight guy. There you go. So, <laughs> that's man, encouraging. That wow. Words of an affirmation. It's encouraging. My kids. So see here, you, do you realize where I'm at in my life right now, where I live, I am actually the young parent. All of my, my teenage uh, daughter's friends, their, their parents are 50 and older. Mm. So I'm a decade younger. So wow, I'm still man. I'm still really encouraged by that, right? You'll be no. the old parent for your baby, right? For for a little kid, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, he's four. <laughs> he's four. Yeah, I feel that way, man. I remember with the first kid, I was like, I'm a young dad. Who are all these old dads? And now I'm like <laughs> the old dad in the room. 
Good night. Good yeah, the night. You don't, function, man. I'm the oldest donut with dad. So. Well, if you don't, uh, if you don't know, me and Rick and Jay went back, go back to the Baptist College of Florida years ago in a little town called Graceville, and uh, got to know Rick a little bit. Jay knows Rick as well, and so uh, it's been many years since we've been able to connect. I mean, just even over Zoom. So it's really encouraging to have you on on the podcast today. Yeah, man, man. it's an honor. Hundred percent. We're gonna we're gonna have some good conversation, Rick. Especially leaning into some of the things that uh, you're passionate about that you share with us. Uh, you mentioned earlier you're the Go Pastor, and we're gonna talk about investing in the next generation and um, a residency program and things like that. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so we'll be right back in just a moment with that conversation with Rick and Josh, and uh, we look forward to it. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, Rick, you are a fascinating person, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I follow you on social media. I, I like to hear you've been calling me a winner for years. You are. Um, a winner, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know Rick, one of his sayings is uh, he calls people a winner. And I, I appreciate that. It makes me feel good. Uh, but Rick, one of the things that I, uh, I, I watch, and this is specifically with social media, is every single month, um, most months, I, I don't know if it's every single month, but you'll, you'll put a post out there and it's like, Hey, here are the 30 things or whatever things that I've learned in the last, uh, month. And I, and I, I just find it fascinating. Um, and I want to, I want to just kick off this conversation, you know, why, what, what prompted you to do that? Where did that come from? Where did that little habit come from where you're, you know, sharing things that you've learned and, and I'm not, these things are mostly mean. They're, they're a lot of fun. They're meaningful. I laugh sometimes. Yeah, I cry sometimes. You know, um, I know just like you guys, um, man, I just love to learn stuff. I am a, I'm trying to learn stuff all the time. So uh, over the years I've started journaling. I'm kind of that guy. I like to journal. And so in the mornings I get up just at a crazy early hour, just because um, some of y'all think that's deeply spiritual, but it's really not. It's really about getting away from your children for a few hours. And so um, I've got that old man thing. I get up real early to get some time with the Lord. I like to, to journal. And so I, I just have two questions I ask in the morning that I kind of write out. One is kind of what happened yesterday. I try to remember the day and look at like what the Lord, you know, did. And the other is like, what did I learn yesterday? And so sometimes it's just simple stuff like, uh, you know, don't go on a, or, or check the weather before you go hiking because, uh, you know, I had a bad day and, and we went hiking and got rained out. Um, and other days it's a little more profound, but I just write down those, those little nuggets. And, uh, then each month I kind of just compile them and really more, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I do it. I'm mainly doing it for my kids one day. So if they can be like, Hey dad, what'd you learn? So I post them online if they're helpful for anybody else. And, um, it's been kind of interesting because a few people in our church have started doing that now. So I love to read what other people are learning. So, uh, that's where I started that. And, it's just kind of a, a fun little way I can try to compile a year. So I like to go back at the end of the year and read over like, okay, what were the themes of the year that kind of God brought out in my life and what did he teach me? So that's where that came from. So how many years have you been doing this process? I've been doing about two years now. Two years. And, and two what years is consistently? How about that? Okay. What would you say one of the greatest lessons you've learned through the process is? Oh man. Um, I think more than anything, just the lesson of consistency, you know, I, I don't know that there's this particular like little thing I've learned that has stood out, but learning that, you know, knowledge is something you build over time. Wisdom is something you build over time. And those daily disciplines are the way that you, um, you grow in those things. Cause, uh, you know, some of the guys I really like, like Craig Groeschel, those guys that get after it are just so disciplined, uh, discipline's not sexy, but I find that, you know, if you can, if you can consistently do things, you see those small changes over time. And uh, I guess that's the, the biggest thing I've learned is just, you know, keep learning. Mm. That's good. Uh, that's good. Now, um, so uh, Rick, you have mentioned earlier, you mentioned the fact that you um, are the go pastor. And, you know, one of the things you do is you work with missions and things like that and mobilizing people. Um, now, one of the things you also mentioned was a residency program, a residency type thing. Now, so uh, help us understand what you mean by that, because um, I hear the word residency. I'm a church planter, so I hear the word residency all the time. And so curious, what do you, when you say residency, what do you mean by residency? What does that entail? Um, share a little bit about what that looks like. Yeah, Jay, that's a great question, because I do find that that word means a lot of different things to different people. So um let me just kind of, I guess, take you on a little story. We, um, 
we found at Christ Place that, you know, we're always having to find new leaders, hire new people, like, like every church. And what we started to see was that uh, a number of our key leaders, even some of our pastors, were coming up through the church, which is a great thing to see. But some of them were coming out of the business world. Some of them were um, just coming with no theological training at all. But man, just gifted, love the Lord, and just grow like crazy. In fact, one of our um, lead team members now came out of the business world as a uh, Sherwin-Williams paint, paint guy. And so he had all this great... Mm-hmm. Uh, knowledge in the business world and just transferred it so well into the ministry setting. And so what we found with a lot of uh, people that were coming through those, they, they really didn't have a lot of that theological training or foundation, you know, the things we get in Bible college. And mm-hmm. so um, the mission statement of our church is, is discipling one another to reach and raise the next generation to live out God's truth. So we're a church that is like seriously focused on trying to reach and developed uh, next generation leaders. So uh, we kind of define that as age 18 to 30. So there's that, that kind of age group. And so we saw a lot of those young leaders that uh, just have so much talent and ability, but uh, really didn't have that opportunity to be developed in a way that they could, uh, if they were called on staff to, to just kind of know some of those basic ministry things. So mm-hmm. we started looking into how can we at Christ Place prepare them through the church and you know, what can we do? And um, pretty much anything good we really do, we probably stole from somebody else that's doing it really well. So for us, the residency program, uh, we went and looked at a church in uh, West Palm, Florida, which, uh, you know, our buddy Jeff Robinson pastors down there. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was Family Church. And we have a great relationship with Family Church. We love Pastor Jimmy Scroggins. And he and his team have helped uh, our church and our team just so much. And they have this great residency program. So we had a chance to go learn from them. And uh, I love their model. Their model for residency is not like an all-encompassing residency. Like what we do, we don't make people sign two years of their life away, you know, come live uh, near our church and some crazy dorms Mm -hmm. and and then give their life, um, you know, 24-7 for residency. We have designed our residency to fit people that have full-time work schedules, full-time college schedules, full-time jobs. And it's really just kind of a get your toe in the water to see if God's calling you. So some people in the residency come from like um, Truett McConnell College, which is a a great Christian college. It's about 30 miles uh, north of our central campus. So we have a lot of those uh, students that already feel called to ministry that that are in the residency. But then we have just regular folks that say, hey, you know, I've always kind of felt a call to ministry, but I don't know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And so we are trying to give them a real basic foundation for Christian ministry, trying to give them a lot of hands-on experience and um, get them prepared to see what God might have them do. So so it's a two-year program and year one has a lot of focus on kind of some, you know, teaching, basic teaching. So we talk about things like uh, your calling in ministry. We do a lot of those things that all of us pastors love to do with personality profiling. Um, we use, uh, we use color blocks. So um, we do a lot of those personality profiles, help people figure out who they are, how they're wired, and then what God might be calling them into. We even kind of help them develop a life call statement that first month. And then we go into a lot of the basics that, you know, we had in Bible college and seminary. We talk about spiritual disciplines and what it means to be, um, spiritually disciplined. We talk about how to make a disciple. You know, something we talk mm-hmm. about at our church a lot is that we want to be force multipliers. So we, mm-hmm. we flesh out what that means, what that looks like, how you make a disciple. Um, we talk about evangelism. We talk about communication, preaching, leadership, how to study the Bible. So we take some of those uh, great things we learn in Bible college and we take them through some of the best books that, you know, I've read over the years. And I know some of those, those books that have probably been touch point books for you guys as well. And um, we meet on Tuesday nights from six to eight. So we do some kind of formal teaching. And then on Sundays, we rotate our residents. So there's kind of four big areas of ministry at Christ Place. And I'm sure, again, they're similar to you guys, but we have our gather ministry, our grow ministry, our go ministry. And then we have admin, administration ministry. So um, they rotate and three months they're in, in uh, each one of those ministries. So they get an opportunity to see like in the gather team, they might be running a camera one morning, or they might be greeting people out front one morning. They might be um, doing all the different ways we can get them to see what happens behind the scenes uh, at church. So 
when they're uh, serving in the admin ministry, you know, they might be uh, plunging toilets on a Sunday morning, um, or they might be emptying trash cans. And on the grow team, they could be in the preschool area to our senior, they could be teaching a senior adult um, small group. And then in the go ministry, you know, they're doing all kinds of different mission, mission related projects. So, so we try to rotate them during that first year so they can get a real feel of what it is to minister behind the scenes at Christ place. And uh, so the, that's the goal of year one is just to train them, you know, time requirements are probably around 10 hours a week. We got that two hours we meet on Tuesday, they serve on Sundays. And then also um, we have them do some, some projects, you know, some simple stuff. They read about a book a month that corresponds with what we're learning. And um, then on Sundays they serve as well. And so that's year one. And then year two of the residency, some of those residents will get a paid internship. You know, depending on how much money is available, we'll probably uh, take about 10 of them and they will be then paid uh, interns in a specific ministry area. So, um, and then we don't promise them anything after that. You know, the goal is to, to raise them up, to um, help them see what God might be calling them to do and then see who God uses. And what we're finding is as we develop campuses, there's just an unlimited need for future leaders. So wow. that was a mouthful, but that's kind of, that's awesome. <clears throat> it's encouraging to hear like you're learning from other churches, but you're sounds like you've made it work for your church culture and the principles that can transfer over. But really, I love the idea that you are inviting everyone. It's not just a select group of, you know, a certain age, but you're talking to full-time people college people. Yeah. I mean, it's really, yeah, it's so neat. Um, really awesome. We're starting year two. And uh, actually I was just working today on the, the residency applications we've gotten. And we've got one gentleman from Haiti that's in his sixties. He's one of my favorite people, uh, just loves the Lord. And he's got such spiritual depth. He, he leads a call every week that has like hundreds of people and he preaches, you know, in, um, in, uh, what's the language they speak Creole. in Haiti? French. Yeah. Creole so, is that French, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this guy's a spiritual giant. And he wants to be in the residency program. He just wants wow. to learn. We got That's him. Awesome. And then we have, uh, you know, some ladies, a, a lady in her thirties and then, um, you know, lots of, lots of young college age students. It's huge. So it's huge. how many, how long have you been doing the residency? We're about to complete our first year. Okay. So you're awesome. a year in. We're a year in. Yeah. You're a year in. You went and you went and studied from other churches and did your homework and learned. How long of a process did you spend? Um, learning well, from other, because I think the temptation would be here, and this is why I bring this up. I think the temptation would be is we all probably hear from big leaders who go, "This is a great opportunity. This is what you should go do. You should start a residency." And the last thing I want is someone to go, "Well, that guy started a residency. It should be really good. Um, we should we should do something like that." Um, what we miss a lot of times is the the hard, long work that was put in prior to launching something like this, mm-hmm. um, and the work, the you know, the groundwork that was laid, and we just want to mm-hmm. instantly. I mean, this is kind of like. You know, if you follow any major leaders, you know, your, uh, you know, Craig Rochelle's, your Kerry Newoff's, people like that, they'll throw out things that are, we should be, you know, working towards, and we want to instantly put it into place. So I want to kind of back up a little bit, if you could share, how long of a process did you guys spend learning from other churches and developing even year one before you, I guess, took applications and then started the residency? So back me up, if you don't mind, of how long the process was before you even started the first year. Well, I think, Jay, what you're saying um, is so true. There's always so much that goes on behind the scenes. And really, this came out of out of need. You know, like I said, it wasn't something that's like, oh, you know, the cool thing to do is a residency. I heard that word. Um, it, it was, it's more like, hey, we have a need here to develop leaders, um, particularly in the area of theology was where we started. Mm-hmm. You know, we started some theology groups and um, it kind of grew from there. But um, I think uh, probably about a two year process. So maybe about a year before we started, we started just teasing around the idea of how could we help, uh, leaders and then going to, going to another church really made me see that, okay, this isn't as overwhelming as I thought. I guess when I think, when I thought residency, I thought so big, I'm like, oh man, we got to get a dorm and we got to figure out a lot of senior adults homes that we can move people into, into basements. And then I got to figure out how to feed all these people. And I don't know, it was just overwhelming. And so it was just such a, blessing that when we went to um the family church they just really said look you make this work for you and that was that was like a yeah. so some things we decided like our goal is not to bring in a lot of people from all over the place from colleges like you know we're not going to liberty university and all the seminary and say hey come join our residency 
we're trying to take who God has at Christ's place, and we're trying to develop those people God's given us. And so that's mm-hmm. very different than, you know, trying to do this big outside mm-hmm. thing. Not that those things are bad, you know, right. We studied a number of other churches that are in our area. 12 stone does a, a great residency. They're a very large church. And, um, you know, we looked at Andy Stanley and what they do and their residencies are way more involved. And so those could be a little overwhelming. Um, the freedom of what I think family church gave us was saying, Hey, you know, make this work for you, you know, figure mm-hmm. out how, how it can work for you. And so that's what we've done. And, you know, year one, I don't know. I was a little skeptical. I didn't really know how it would go. We had 12 that, um, that signed up and I thought, man, 12, that's a lot. That's great. That's a great first year. I didn't know if any of them would make it through. Um, I didn't well. know about their personalities, whether we'd mesh, but you guys know me, I flat love people, especially young people. That's and right. I'm a real, real dork with it. I call them winners. And, um, you know, and I, I just feel like a big part of my life is that I'm that age now where a 20 year old, I could just about be their dad. So I just enjoy these students. And so we finished up this year with 10 of the 12. Um, one uh, stepped out for some personal reasons. Interestingly enough, he's going to start back year one this next year. And um, another one, she got her nursing degree and she moved away. So our retention rate has been really good. And to see these young men, and I say young men because all of them, all 10 of them are men grow this year has just been so encouraging. They've all grown just leaps and bounds spiritually. You know, they figured out ministry calling. In fact, um, one of our residents is, um, he's a teacher at a local elementary school. He's like a, I don't know, a third grade teacher maybe. And he's early twenties, you know, just graduated. He's been teaching a year or two. Well, um, at our North campus, we had a need for a children's pastor, you know, kind of a Mm -hmm. part-time children's pastor. We got children coming out of our ears and we had an opening and uh, Zach stepped in and he's been leading that. It's so cool to see already this young man that's been through the residency, God's using him in children's ministry in a great way, doing a great job. Did I answer all your questions, Jay? Yeah. Um, So I know you did. I'm, I'm fascinated by this because one of the things, one of the studies we're working on right now especially in light and in in light of the church planting world is uh what we're finding i'm in boston church planting in boston is what they're what 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 we're seeing is the 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 stream of people wanting to plant churches and move to different places to plant churches is is not as as you know flowing as fast as it used to Mm -hmm. and what we're seeing honestly is i was talking to a guy today in florida who said they're seeing actually a surge of uh, pastors who are stepping away from ministry, um, and and the, the, there's a shortage in these pastors. And again, whatever it may be, we're not keeping up. But I think what the real struggle that I'm identifying within the local church that I'm I'm glad we're having this conversation is I think one of the things we're we're missing out on is we've we've kind of given away the responsibility to train people for ministry to our seminaries. Now that's not a knock on our seminaries. All of us went to seminary and we all are grateful for that education, but there is a local context that I believe we've kind of missed out on. And you're using the word residency. I went through a different type of residency for church planting, but this concept of how we're really making disciples, because what you're doing is you're making disciples um, Mm -hmm. that are Lord willing, will go on to make more disciples. That's what you're doing through the residency program. And I think what, what, what is key for churches and what we should really, you know, digest from this conversation is uh, even what you just said is like, make it work for you. You may not be able to have a full on two year residency, but what can you do to make disciples? What can you be a part of? I'm so encouraged by this because Mm -hmm. I think the future, the future pastors are sitting in our churches, Mm -hmm. future pastors are sitting in our churches Mm -hmm. and they may never go to seminary, But what if, what if, what if they went to your residency? What if they were just discipled by you? What impact could we actually make? Right. You talked about a a campus needing a children's uh, pastor and you have a, you have somebody who's a teacher in an elementary school that went through a residency and is now filling the gap as a children in the children's pastor role. Hello. This should be an alarm for all of us to go, wait a minute, time out. This is the key. And that is so mm-hmm. much more rewarding than getting on the web, getting on a website and saying, we need to find ourselves a, a children's pastor that we don't know. That's not part of our DNA and bring them in right. yes. and hire them and say, okay, now I need you to, you know, learn our DNA really quick on a fast paced program so that you can be our children's pastor mm-hmm. or 
this guy's been a part of your church, knows your DNA. You've mm-hmm. taught him, you, you know, you've coached him through being mm-hmm. a disciple. I think this is beautiful. This is well, this needs to be heard. Well, and Jay, something, um, let, me, let me address something you said, because I think it, it it sparked something I've thought about a lot. Um, a guy that's been mentoring uh, me and some other guys, he he said something the other day about hiring people. And he said, the problem lots of times with churches is they hire men or women who have already stepped into their privilege. And what he means is, uh, you know, guys like us, that we've been doing ministry a long time, you know, we've got families, um, we don't know if we're going to fit the DNA of a church. If we got called somewhere else, we sure hope so. But we require a lot. We we're um, we require a lot of pay. We require a lot of you know. We got our own thoughts. But when you raise up young people, um, you get the chance to help shape uh, how they think about the church, how they think about uh, mission and vision and those those kinds of things we're doing. So um, and they're hungry, man. They're hungry. They're like. Um, you know, what we still should be, and I know I still am, you guys are too, but when you're young, you have so many ideals and passions and you're so hungry. And that's what I see with these residents. And you can start them out at a very manageable kind of way. They can be a volunteer or or, um, work for not a lot of money. Cause I think the money thing maybe scares a lot of churches. Like we can't hire these people, Mm -hmm. Um, but you give people opportunities and you give them an opportunity to succeed or to fail and if you believe in them, man, God can do great things. Um, one other thought, and then then I'll kind of be quiet. But um, I think, too, with the residency, I love finding high-level leaders. Like, I think we're all looking for those eagles, you know. Um, and with our color blocks, you know, that we're looking for that red, that red leader that's uh, like a D, a driver. And it was interesting because when God gave us the residents, the, the group of guys I got were um, – all servants, like they're mission-minded, servant-hearted. None of them were real natural drivers. And in my mind, I was kind of like, man, I need some, you know, I need some alpha males in there that are going to change the world. (laughs) And I think I, in some ways, had judged these guys that um, maybe they're not going to be great leaders. But I found out the opposite, that, you know, these guys, man, God has shaped them. And I think sometimes we're looking for something that maybe we just need to look and see what God's given us. And um, sometimes we're looking to bring other people in when, if we will look Mm -hmm. into our congregation, uh, you know, maybe that dude doesn't have a great voice, but maybe he can learn, you know, maybe he can learn the guitar or maybe that boy, he can't preach yet, but uh, maybe he could be taught and he's got a real passion for people. Um, Got a fellow this year that he, man, he just got saved. He's 20 years old. He's passionate for the Lord. He's redheaded with a mullet. I mean, he is North Georgia as, as can be. And this young man is on fire for the Lord. Let's go. He doesn't, listen, he, he doesn't have any plans to go to college. He wants, listen, he wants to do taxidermy. Okay. Like he is a redneck, but he is on fire for the Lord. <laughs> Guess who signed a residency application? This young man. I can't wait oh, to see awesome. what God's going to do with him. He's going to be reading books he's never read before. And so I just keep, uh, I'm amazed at who God sends us. They're not always the the ones I would think, man, that's the one I'm picking. Right. But when God sends them, they're amazing. And God's just, uh, he keeps reminding me that, look, look, I don't use the people who you want to use. I use who I want to use. And then I keep remembering if God can use Jay Mudd and Rick Herman, man, I mean, Josh Robinson. Yeah. I mean, Josh is pretty awesome. You're a given. You're a given. It's not true. You're a given, Josh. It's, it's really us. I'm going to kick all you guys in the knee when I see you in person. You said that to me last time. I don't know what it is with kicking me in the knee, but I don't know why I say that. But so Rick, I'm reminded again, (laughs) instantly when you start talking about like, yeah, not picking the person that we thought you go back Mm -hmm. to, you know, when, you know, all the boys are lined up and Samuel comes in and says, where's the next King. Yeah. And he ain't, he's not standing there. He's out yeah. in the he's out in the field yeah. with the sheep. Uh, that's yeah. David, right? And we all know that's who right. David is. God, that's how God works, right? He, I think we are. Yeah. I think we have this picture of like we have to have this, you know, this ideal meet all these qualifications. And what you're reminding yeah. us, Rick, is the importance of God has given us. God has given mm-hmm. us these these re- get. He's given us this this church, this beautiful body. And within mm-hmm. the body, he's not going to neglect. Um, he's not going to neglect parts of that body. Uh, we're just waiting on somebody to step up and be that part that they're supposed to be. Beautiful, great. I uh, love that it's intentional. I love that you're not just saying, "Oh, we need more leaders," like most churches do, right? We just kind of look around and say, "Well, we need more people to fill a spot," or we need, you know, this new room to open up for the kids. But instead, you're saying, 
let's let's invite people to step into a, a more intentional pathway to become you know who God's wired them to be. You know, all the disciples were different: tax collectors, fishermen. I mean, you really, you really, it's it just sounds to me like a really clear, you know, invitation to a deeper walk, like a a, a heavier load. But you're saying, hey, we want to equip you to be all that God wants you to be. And I think that needs to be replicated in every local church, maybe not the exact same way, depending on the resources or the staff. But, you know, we're looking at that in our church here as we're looking ahead to 2022 and we're seeing new families come in. We're seeing the need for more groups to start. We're seeing uh, the needs. I mean, recovery ministry is off the charts right now. We are developing praying for more care groups to, you know, uh, addiction groups. We have two groups for men that are coming out of uh, sexual addiction. I mean, that's just growing. Uh, and that, so it's looking at it from like you're saying, saying, we want to take the people we have and say, God, would you help us to help them grow, help them be equipped? Because ultimately that's real leadership. It's not like you're saying, go, go find someone from the outside, but make sure we're making the most of who God already has given us. Yeah. And uh, let me take one more step back really before the residency. Uh, you guys can probably identify with this. Um, Christ Place, we, we used to be called Blackshire Place Baptist Church. We're a large church, large Southern Baptist church, um, probably about, I don't know, eight or 9,000 members. Who knows? We couldn't find that many ever on a Sunday. But um, but we're a church that, man, has done ministry well, done programming well. And for years and years, we did probably what most people do. You know, we'd have a monthly training and we'd teach the people to turn the widgets. Hey, this is what you need to do, X, Y, and Z. And we found that um, we were always lacking for workers and we were always realizing that, uh, man, our people just, I don't know, they just weren't growing. And the reason they weren't growing is because we weren't discipling them. And so we start asking the question, how do we disciple leadership? And Jay, mm -hmm. you nailed it. You know, residency is just a form of discipleship. But, um, mm -hmm. and, and when we did that, we really got some help from a guy named Mac Lake. Y'all might have heard of Mac and, mm -hmm. uh, Mac. Shout out to Mac. Guy. Shout out Mac. I Mac I'm a fan and, of uh, Mac. A fan you know, of Mac. Got, yeah. Love that guy. You know, we got trained by Mac on uh, leadership pipeline, uh, which is really just super simple leadership discipleship. And it's really changing the culture of who we are as a church where, our goal is not to get people in rooms, to turn widgets, to run programs, but to mm -hmm. disciple people in leadership. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of started the process that really um, birthed the residency. And that's something that's uh, it's huge at, at our church. We, you know, every single ministry has leadership pipelines and we're mm -hmm. growing in that. And we're getting better at that. But um, it's turned into weekly discipleship instead of monthly informational training. That's good. That is good. Um, I'm going to go back and re-listen to this thing and write all these notes down. Right. right. There's a lot. There's this a lot is good here. Stuff. So, uh, so let me, I, I think this is an obvious question, but um, let's kind of summarize maybe, you know, if you were thinking through this, what, what in the last year, give me one thing that you stands out as a lesson that you've learned from the, from, from the residency. You've given a lot, but maybe there's something left hanging there. I don't want to leave anything on the table, uh, off the table. What, what is a big lesson that you've learned that like, you know, hey, next year when we do year one, mm -hmm. we might do this a little bit different because of the lesson I've learned or we might really well, lean into lesson, this. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll just give you a couple. One, I just, I just mentioned, I, I want to mention again because I think it's so important is look at the people in front of you. You know, look who God has put in your church. And you say, well, we don't have, you know, 15 young people. Do you have one? You know, do you have two? Um, you know, where can you start? I think sometimes we make excuses because we think, well, that church has that much resources or that church has that many staff. And, um, you know, you're always going to find people who have more than you, but where can you start? So I would say, look, who's in front of you. Um, then two, you know, what, what year one has done is we're, we've built a template. And if you can have a template to follow a simple system, then that makes it not as overwhelming. Building out the template can be difficult. And I'll be glad to share with, with anybody, you know, what we've done. There's a number, there's a lot of help out there, but you know, I picked my 12 favorite books in those areas. Um, a couple of them are boring, but most of them were like life changing, mm -hmm. you know, books that I, I tell these residents, I'm like, if you read these and you really digest it, it will change your life. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the, having that simple template makes year two less scary. Yeah. And then, you know, over year one, um, I have written down things that I find myself saying a lot. 
And so I'm kind of trying to develop a leadership culture or leadership values around our, um, our residency that are kind of residency specific. Like mm -hmm. I tell them all the time, I'm like, guys, 10 pages a day, read 10 pages a day. If you can learn to read 10 pages a day, it might take you 15 to 20 minutes. You will change your world because if you read 10 pages a day, that's 300 pages a month. That's about uh, two books. Let's see here. That's three books every two months. So, uh, you know, you're mm -hmm. reading a lot of books. If you just mm -hmm. read 10 pages a day, people can get mm -hmm. in that discipline. You know, I tell them uh, all the time, they get sick of hearing. I tell them they're winners all the time. But I also say, I'm like, guys, if you can learn to be H3 leaders, you'll change the world and you'll always have somebody wanting to hire you. And they're like, Ugh. and I'm like, H3, <laughs> hungry, humble, and hustle. And yeah. so every week I'm like, hey guys, what's an H3 leader? Hungry, humble, hustle. You know, and, and I love it that these guys are young because I, I teach them stuff that's just like simple, like do not be late. You know, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're on time, you're, you're late, you know, you need to be 15 right. minutes early and just simple stuff that I don't think young people think about a lot, but like, you know, dress for the job you want, not, you know, the, the position you have things like mm -hmm. just how you present yourself. You know, I know mm -hmm. your, your new Jordans are super cool, but are they going to be something that you really want to wear when you're teaching the senior adult class? Are you thinking of others or yourself? Um, just those like, I don't know, you know, those, yeah. you know Jay, those, I'd, those little nuggets I write down every day. That's I'd, good. Uh, I'd wear some Jordans and teach some seniors. You would, <laughs> and, but you could get away with that because you have an old face, but these young I, residents couldn't. I don't have an old face. Leave me alone. This, All this right. is good. This is like, this is Daddy Rick's uh, wisdom. You know yeah, I know, right? He's the old man in the room right now. But he's an encourager. What I've loved about Rick over the years is he is an encourager. He is a 100% he speaks life into people. And he used to text me often and encourage me. Yeah. Uh, Did he stop? Did he stopped. He stopped texting you. I realized, you know, if you're watching this, I realize how dark it's getting. Do you realize how dark it is here in New England? Uh, I don't know how dark it is at your it's place. It's nighttime there. It's almost night. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, there, like, are, they, uh, are you okay in there? I should be like a polar bear come out and grab you. <laughs> it's Lord uh, it is. We get dark at like four. <laughs> we get dark at four thirty here. Like, so. are you feeling okay? If you little dark okay. on your side of the world. Hey, hey, one other thing I'd say too, um, with these guys that I was just thinking about. So I um. I take them all. I try to twice a year, take them to breakfast or lunch. And um, during that time, and again, if you don't have a budget for that, take them a coffee. Um, I ask them some specific questions. I'm like, Hey, if, if you could, if you could write out who the ideal you would be in five years, you know, what would that look like? And I ask them some yeah. these big yeah. questions and I say, well, how can I help you get there? And we kind of write out just simple plans. Cause I think uh, lots mm -hmm. of young people don't know how to think through life. And, yeah. uh, you know, the older us guys get, we, we kind of, we love to help people with that. So, so I like to help them think. And then I just, um, really, if you can hold them accountable, I've had to have some hard conversations about, um, Hey, you know, what, one guy this year, he slept through our lunch date. Like we had a lunch meeting and he slept through the lunch meeting and he was so apologetic, felt terrible, but I'm like, bro you're done in the residency. If you stand me up for a lunch meeting, because you're asleep, like that's not H3 leader. And so, you know, but I see that if we have these hard conversations, they either grow or get out. And that's kind mm -hmm. of, you know, that's an opportunity for them. So, mm -hmm. but I do try to remember they're young and mm -hmm. man, I remember watching you guys when you were young and me, when I was young, golly, I can't <laughs> believe those churches didn't fire us. <laughs> well, true. one, one actually did. No, okay. I'm joking. 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 <laughs> Thanks. Thankful a lot for the pra the patience of God and people older than us. That's that's for sure. Well, listen, I I, I Josh, you're gonna have to go back and listen because I tried to keep up with all the stuff that we could uh we we could draw from this conversation with Rick, and we could keep going uh for mm. for a long time learning. And yeah. uh, but here's a couple of things I jotted down. I think that are, are worth jotting down. Um. First and foremost is is I this overarching theme that I I've, I felt from the whole conversation is God has already given us the resources we need. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I felt like that was there. We didn't. Act, I don't know if we actually said it, but over and over you kept talking about how there's people right in front of you and things like that. And so these resources are there. The, all that we need to continue to uh, help the church, God's you know local bride there, uh, wherever you are, is there. God's given you those things you need. Um, I, I wrote down, identify what you can do and do it to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. Um, as you just said a minute ago, if you can't do lunch, do coffee, you know, do identify what you can do 
and do it to the best of your ability. Have a plan, right? And you said the template was the hardest part and they could reach out to you. We'll give uh, your contact at least an email, maybe in the show notes or whatnot, right? Um, it's really about making disciples, not a new program. I wrote that down because that's what we talked about, right? It's the fact that mm -hmm. like, this really is about discipleship, not necessarily a fancy program. You don't have to call it res a residency program, right? Just right. make disciples. That's what we're called to do. Um, the, this concept of look who's in front of you. Um, I, I loved it. I think I heard that over and over and over again of like, you know, your story of your gentleman who has a mullet that is going to be in the residency next year. Love that guy, man the guys that you had in there that didn't really maybe meet the expectations of whatever the, um, you know, whatever the study, I mean, the um, assessment that you gave them, the you know, personnel Personality profile or whatever. Yeah. It didn't meet your expectations at first, but they turned out all to be amazing, amazing leaders. Um, and then we should do a whole new podcast on the H3 leader and being the H3 leader, mm -hmm. hungry, humble, and a hustle hustler. Right. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. I'll make sure I got it right. Hungry, humble, not hustler, Jay. Hustle. Oh. Yeah. hustle work hard get after it have some, grit. It. Have it. some grit have some grit hey this has been good uh in my mind it's been good there's a lot here you may have to re-listen re to this if you're listening uh josh you got any final thoughts for rick you got any final well, questions rick, we for appreciate rick? it yeah we appreciate your time and you know i i hope that everyone listening you'll follow rick on social and his church and see what god's doing through their ministry and i love to learn from other leaders and so this has been a been a great one to listen to and to take it in uh, because I really believe uh, this next year, God is going to be doing something even more special by hopefully reori reorienting people back to church. But more than that, for those that have been disconnected to be fully engaged in the mission. And so we've got to be ready uh, as leaders to equip and empower uh, because I do think God's bringing that uh, to, the, to the local church. And uh, it's we've, some people have taken a year off or more. But um, as God brings leaders, man, this is a great way. I'm just seeing this principle that you're doing, Rick, just to really impact churches and help us to, to not yeah. be on the defensive, get back on the offense and let's move forward. Let's, let's equip, let's reach people, let's disciple people, let's raise up leaders. And uh, this is a great, just really clear way to do that. So I appreciate you Absolutely. sharing. Hey guys, I know we're cutting off. I just wanted to say one more thing that um, I think maybe some of our pastors need to hear. This is the pastor pod. The other thing that happens is that young leaders re-energize you. They remind you of why you got in the ministry and they, they, they give you this new passion and this new fire, this um, idealism that Jesus can change the world and, uh, and it re-inspires your faith. So I just encourage you with that too, is that um, when you get around young guys, or young girls, whatever that, uh, you know, young people on fire for the Lord, it does something for your heart. Mm, that's good. So good. So good. Uh, Rick, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Is it private message uh, on they, Twitter or is it an email address? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm on a few of the socials. Um, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and, uh, Instagram, I, uh, email at rherman at christplace.com. That's two N's. I'll drop, it, H I'll drop it in the notes. They can get okay. it there. Yeah. I'll drop it in the notes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. All right. Rick, cool. I would like to say you are a winner. No, you are a winner. <laughs> on, on that note, to all the winners listening, thanks for joining us on the Pastor Pod. We hope that you will continue to join the conversation each and every week. You can reach out to us if you have questions or would like to learn more at thepastorpod at gmail.com. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs>